I've always thought that when you want to master a topic, you buy three or four books on it. The same concept may be explained in different ways, and one version may click. There might be things in one book that's not in the others. These days, you're likely to use a combination of books, websites and videos to study on a topic. In relation to the latter, for amateur radio, I suggest VK2TIP's radio tutorials and Colin Mitchell's Talking Electronics for a basic grounding in electronics and basic radio. But still, there's a lot to be said for an old-fashioned book, especially if you can take it somewhere quiet that's offline and with no distractions. The latest book to come out is Ron Bertrand's Radio Theory Handbook. Ron VK2DQ is most known as the founder of the Radio and Electronics School. That's taught hundreds, if not thousands, of VK amateurs, allowing them to get on the air or upgrade their license. Ron kindly sent me a copy for review, and this video is the result. The first impression is its size and weight, almost as thick as an ARRL antenna handbook, and nearly 600 pages. But don't let that daunt you. A lot of the reason for the size of the book is the large print size. There's liberal use of pictures, diagrams and formulas to help explain things. An important question for many viewers is, does the book relate to them? Because their licence requirements may be different to that which we have in Australia. The answer is generally yes, because this book has been written to meet or exceed CEPT international standards. That is, the book will take you from beginner to advanced licence level in most countries. In fact, I found there are a lot of things in the book that went beyond the amateur licence qualifications. So, if you're studying to be an electronics technician, then the book could be worthwhile for that as well. The book takes a conventional approach. First of all, the fundamentals of electricity and magnetism, then circuits, and then we move on to the components we're familiar with in electronics. Then it gets onto active components, stages, and then radio specific topics like propagation and modulation. Part of the thickness of the book is because of its large print, as I mentioned before. The other reason is because it goes into things quite thoroughly. Even if you've long held your country's top license grade, things in this book are likely to be new to you. If you take the time to read it, you'll not only pass the exam, but also be generally educated in radio theory, and even a little bit beyond. Ron is also not afraid to use analogies from music, physics and mechanics. These sorts of broader engineering insights are often missing from some radio-only books. Another thing I noticed is there is use of analogies for music, physics, mechanics and engineering. That gives you a broader education, which some radio-only books might skip. I also liked how there are little experiments. For instance, using dissimilar metals and a lemon to produce a simple battery, which you are invited to measure the voltage of. What else did I find about the book? The sentences are short and clear. It's almost as if Ron is talking to you. There's coverage of old things, for instance, valves and carbon microphones. Maybe not used so much now, but it could still be useful to give some historical background. And speaking of historical background, there's also material on some of the pioneers of radio and electronics, particularly those who gave their surnames to the units that we use for measurement. For instance, ohms, amps, volts and coulombs. I really liked how some of the explanations went beyond what you needed to know the exam into how they worked in real life. For instance, this discussion on AGC and how you'd actually use it when you're on the air. A handy index is provided. A great strength of this book, compared with many others, is coverage of a lot of the new digital modes. There's also welcome coverage of repeated topics like cavity filters, duplexes and even circulators, which are rarely covered in amateur textbooks. Something all electricity books need to grapple with is current flow, because the flow of electrons versus conventional current flow, which is in the opposite direction, is different. This book uses the technically more correct electron flow, which leads to diagrams like this. 
it can have you scratching your head until you realise what's going on. Something you'll get used to when you read the book is the figure numbering. Normally, if you do it in this format, it's the chapter and then the number in that chapter. It's a bit like how Americans do date. The day and month is reversed. For instance, in this same chapter, we go from figure 524 to figure 624. No real hassle, but if you think your eyes are playing tricks, it's not just you. If the book goes to a second printing, and it certainly deserves to do so, what are some things I would change about it? First of all, better proofreading. There are too many spelling mistakes in it for a book of this calibre. However, in nearly all cases, you can work out what the writer was intended to say. Secondly, I think there could have been greater use of some simpler concepts and a less steep learning curve in some sections. For instance, the part on receivers talks about homodyne receivers giving half a page, whereas regenerative and direct conversion receivers are practical homebrew projects but get very little attention. Similarly on transmitters, there's an example given of a dual conversion SSB transceiver. Personally, if I was explaining SSB, I would start off with the simplest possible. That is a simple single frequency filter type SSB transceiver. Then I'd go up to single conversion, which can give very good performance if well built. Then later on, I'd discuss the pros and cons of double conversion but I wouldn't present double conversion first up. If you want to really understand radio and not just pass an exam, then the Radio Theory Handbook is for you. Useful in a variety of countries, you'll know things about radio after reading it that you probably didn't know before, even if you've already got the highest grade of license in your country. In addition, even if you're not into amateur radio and are instead studying to become a communications technician, then this also could be a useful text. The price is also very reasonable. Information about ordering appears in the link below. And thanks to Ron Bertrand, VK2DQ, for the review copy.